Why are people angry? Because they are unemployed. Now with this uh, pandemic economy, uh, we, the, the, there is a projection of at least a million um, unemployed before the end of the year. Right now it's about 860,000 who are speaking on their behalf. We hear major impressive pronouncements about what could be done, what needs to be done, what has been announced. And people are happy, of course. You get 40 ringgit or 400 ringgit or 1,000. Everybody is happy. But the amount being squandered by leaders are billions. And this needs to stop. Um, 2016 World Bank survey revealed 27% of Kuala Lumpur households earn less than Bank Negara's estimate of a living wage. In 2018, UNICEF study of families living in low-income housing found 99.7% of children living in relative poverty. One of the indicators of poverty is malnourishment which at early ages can cause lifelong deficits in learning and cognition. Is that not our concern? Are they, is this affecting Malays? Yes. Viputras? Yes. Some urban Chinese? Yes. Indian estate um, sector or the urban sector? Yes. The Dayaks, the Kadazan? Yes. But what is the effect? There are children stunting increased from 17 0.2% in 2006 to 20.7% of all children below 5 in 2016. Does this mean that we have not done anything? Does it mean that there was no overall economic expansion from 2010 to 2016? There was. But growth did not address the fundamental inequalities in our society. In fact, those inequalities grow more pronounced as subsequent generations, including your generation, worse than what we observed in the past. So, it's um, aggravated, exacerbated by education deficits, health deficits, wealth deficits. The observation of the real dilemma of poverty was a crime. We don't, don't need to repeat this point. Hiding behind the statistical data, well, we improved from 40% to 30%, and the Minister of Economy recently announced, well, we can resolve it in 2030. Ah, I, <laughs> I'm sounding angry. I mean, what if it f f uh, affect your son or your nephew? Do you want to wait till 2030? What difference does it make between a Malay child in a kampong or a daya in Kapit or Karazan in Kundasa? Why can't you just say that we'll do, we'll take whatever measure necessary and act now and don't wait until 2030 to resolve this major problem? This is the failure of governance and uh, when we address purely the issue of uh, statistics and numbers. Because numbers be impressive. Now it's 20%, in 2030 it will be 5% or probably zero. But that 20% had to struggle and they are our children. That's why I say when you talk about race or religion, where is the humanity? If you talk about justice and humanity, you can mention Malayu or China. It does not matter. I don't worry necessarily. But we talk in terms of a government policy that ignores the uh, absolute need to act um, in earnest in dealing with this issue, it is clearly worrying. The Khazana Research Institute, for example, Acknowledge this. Um, Malaysians feel a sense of disconnect with official poverty statistics. They feel that their incomes are barely enough to make ends meet 
And yet, by official count, we have almost no poverty in the country. Of course, they have now amended that and acknowledged after this big, big hoo-ha of Philip Ashton and Professor Jomo Sundram and, and Raja Rasia and Fatima Kari presented um, a compelling case against official government fi uh, figures.